Are you planning for a data science or machine learning interview? Don't know what to study and where to begin. Don't worry, I have got you covered. In this video, I'll work you through a powerful four-week study plan that help a real ML engineer crack multiple interview. Let's dive right in. Week number one, you can start with the foundational thing like statistics, probability, and the linear algebra. So why this week? Because every machine learning algorithm is built on that basics. So first, let's see the topic about the statistics and the probability. So first topic, you can first learn about the p-values. So it tells if a result is significant or just happened by chance. Then we have the confidence uh, interval. So it's a range where the true value or true answer is probably lies. Then we have the CLT. CLT is also called the central limit theorem. So even if, if your data is normal, and if you take here enough samples, so average of it is look like the normals. It's called the CLT. Then uh, the important one is uh, lies in the probabilities. So probability actually has the machine learning to make the predictions. The first one is called the bias theorem. So uh, it's helped the calculate the chance of something happening or given some kind of prior information. So I can also take one example. Let's say if a person have the cough. So what's the chance by the cough? It's, it's taking uh, some kind of percentage. Okay. Then uh, you have the conditional probabilities. So uh, the chance of something that given the something else happen is the conditional probability. Then the distribution, normal, binomial, and the poisons. So normal in the normal case, you can learn about the bell shaped curve. It look like that the bell shaped curve. Okay, the bell shaped curve like that. So uh, it having some kind of percentile as well, fifty percent, seventy five percent, and the twenty five percent as well. The percentile things. So it's a normal distribution. You can learn about this bell shaped curve. You can say that bell shaped, let's say shaped curve. Then you can also. Uh, learn some kind of things about the normal distribution because most of the uh, data real-time data is lies between these normal distributions then we have the binomial so it's nothing but like uh, the classification problems yes or no so when you flip one coins it may be the hat or it may be the tails then you have the poison so poison is nothing but one kind of uh, rear event count like a uh, number of website crashes apart week it's the rear cases then uh, we have the last one is called the hypothesis testing and the aesthetical significant. So hypothesis testing is nothing but called the A-B testing, okay? Or you can say A-B experimental. So I can take one example, let's say uh, is the version of A of a website is better than B. Let's say if you have the two website A and B, so A and B, so just need to give here one kind of comparisons or do experiment that if the website number A is better than B or not, like this. This is called the hypothesis testing. Now let's see the linear algebra, okay? So in the case of linear algebra, it's must know for the machine learning, uh, okay? So the linear algebra is going to help us to uh, do more things about the MLs because using this linear algebra technique, uh, the machine process the data in from a vector and the matrices. So in the linear algebra, first you need to learn about the vectors. So vector is nothing but uh, just array of numbers. Same thing as the case of the matrices. If you uh, if you learn about that in your uh, secondary or the high school, you can know about that. What is the vector and the matrices? Then the dot product is important. It actually help us to uh, measure how similar the two vectors are. So let's say I have one vector space. Let's say I have one space. So I have uh, some kind of word. Let's say this word, this word, and this word. So it will just going to uh, creating here one kind of similarity to those all of the value. So I'm already creating here a series about build a large language model from scratch. So uh, the next topic we will discuss about that is about the attention mechanisms. So in the case of attention mechanisms, so we need to also learn about this dot product. So which one is also important in terms of the LLMs. Then the cosine similarity. So using cosine similarity, we can actually uh, we can uh, uh, basically calculating here some kind of distance like that. So using this cosine similarity technique, we actually uh, creating here one recommended system as well. Then we have the matrix multiplication. It's basically uh, used in the neural network. It's also used in the DSA as well, MCM pattern. So it's quite important as well as uh, this is uh, helpful in terms of the machine learning, uh, basically for the back propagations, uh, the calculation of the back propagations and weight updation as well. Then you have the Egan value and the Egan vector. So it's important for reducing the dimensions and uh, in the PCA. Uh, the principal component analysis. So in the project number 73, you already create a project called the image compression using PCA. Higher, you actually discuss about this Egan value and the Egan vector, then how can you calculate them, okay? And how can you reduce the size of the images? Then you can discuss about various types of application PCA and the neural network as well in the linear algebra technique, okay? 
Now the third uh, one, I mean not third one actually, the week number two. So in the week number two, you can uh, learn about this core machine learning plus evaluation metrics. So why this actually? Because to learn here the learn and compare the machine learning algorithms. So first one is about the linear regression. So it actually help us to predict the number like the house prices are basically used in the regression tax. Okay. Then you have the logistic regressions, uh, the intuition and the math behind that. How can you use the sigmoid activation functions? A lot of things you to learn about that. Okay. So in case of logistic regressions, you can basically predicting here the yes and no. It's nothing but one kind of binary classification like that. And in case of decision tree that you can see, it's like uh, playing with the 20 questions to the predict something. Let's say if you have uh, more amount of questions and you need to take the decisions and you can using here this kind of decision tree. Then you have the SBM that you can see SBM also called the support vector meshes. So it's draw here and best line to separate here to go. Let's say I have true go. Let's say this group and let's say I'm taking here uh, another one. Let's say I have two group like that. Okay, true group. So using this one, you can separating here uh, this SBM. Okay. So this is called the SBM support vector meshes. You need to actually draw here and best fit line so that you can separating here the true groups in terms of the SBM. Then what you have, we have the KNN also called the K nearest neighbors. It actually uh, looks at nearby point to decide uh, is the point sliced between this uh, class or not. Then the Nebias is the important one. So using Nebias, we can uh, also do some kind of uh, technique. Uh, it's basically first time for models is based on the probability. Then the ensemble method. Uh, ensemble means uh, uh, taking here some of the model and join all of them. Like uh, using here the decision tree, the random forest is coming. So in the in the case of random forest, it's nothing but kind of advanced tree model. So they are super powerful. Okay. And in case of decision tree, if you divide them, you may get some kind of a decision tree inside this random forest. Then uh, you need to also learn about the overfitting. What is the overfitting and what is the underfitting? As well as what is the bias variance straight up. So overfitting is nothing but one kind of technique. Uh, it's mean the model is going to so many specific. It's just memorize the training data. So when the new tree is not ca is coming, it's unable to predict. It's called the Uber fitting. So underfitting is the model is too simple. It's uh, misses some kind of pattern. That means it's the bad models. Then biases variance. Uh, it's nothing but for one. It's you if you wanted to balance or not too complex or not too simple, then you can using this bias and variance technique. Uh, basically, high variance, high bias or low variance, some kind of technique you can learn inside this core machine learning. Then you have the evaluation matrix, uh, the most important one. It actually used to uh, measure here the model performance, how your model actually uh, perform in the new data. Okay, then you can uh, see the first one is called the accuracy. So accuracy is nothing but the percentage of correct predictions. How many percentage of correct uh, prediction it actually do? It's called the accuracy. Then you have the precision that you can see. So precision is how many predicted positive or actually positive. See how many predicted positive is actually positive. It's called the precision. Is it actually positive or not? Then we have the recall score. So recall score is how many real positive are found. Because when you draw any confusion matrix, you have the true positive, true negative, false positive, and the false negative. From this confusion matrix, you can easily easily calculate it here the accuracy, precision, recall, and F1 score or everything. Okay. So now what is the F1 score actually? So F1 score is a combination of the precision and the recall. That's it. And ROC curve and the AOC, this ROC, okay, that you can see this ROC and the AOC, the ROC and the AOC, it's a measure how well the model is separated to the two class. How well, okay. So uh, week number two, you can learn about this core machine learning and uh, uh, the evolution matrix. Now week number three, you can uh, uh, learn about some kind of basic coding and the SQL as well as some kind of projects. So why this actually to prepare for coding rounds and the project discussion, right? So Python, the uh, most important one is called the release comprehensions. Most of the time you need to using here the release comprehension technique. Then you can learn about the NumPy. So using NumPy, uh, you can do some kind of matrix multiplications and it is for first math and address. Then the pandas, so using pandas that you can see using pandas. So using pandas uh, for working with the data tables or some kind of data manipulations or the data visualization as well. Or you can also learn about the matplotlib as well. Then the SQL, so in terms of SQL, you need to know, learn about the join, the how join actually work and how can you actually combine the data from the multiple tables. It's basically important for the data analysis and kind of ML jobs. So join, it will help us to combine the data from the multiple uh, tables. And the subqueries, uh, is subqueries is nothing but the aggregating data like 
uh, total sales per month. Uh, uh, it's uh, you can say that sorry, not actually uh, the sub query. Sorry, sub queries is nothing but for query insert another query. So uh, the group you can also learn about the group. So let's say group. Okay, let's say G R O U P group. So group by. Okay, so using group by you can aggregating the data like uh, total sales per month. You can aggregate in them. And using sub query, you can uh, do uh, the query inside your query. Okay. Now the Windows function. This is the most important one. Okay. Windows so no, not Windows actually Windows function. Okay. So Windows functions uh, actually calculate in the across row. Uh, you can say as a moving average. So moving average. So if you uh, know about uh, the stock price. Okay. So moving average is nothing but one uh, best technique that is used in terms of the stock price predictions. Okay. So I already created the video about that in our multiverse series and I already uh, creating here 73 projects with the tutorial and the code. You can go and check this uh, in the description. You can get the, uh, all of the things on here. Okay. Then the feature engineering. Okay. The feature engineer processing is the most important one that how can you select the uh, features from the bust of the features and you can uh, creating an extra feature on that. This is the most important one. Feature engineering and the processing part. Then uh, you can uh, prepare some kind of projects. Uh, that you can see. So uh, it will help us to know your code. Let's say you do here five or 10 projects. So you just need to know your code well, that how code it should work. Then also, you know, to explain everything, why you chose the model, uh, how you clean the data or uh, the what result you actually got. Okay, this is the important one in case the projects. Then in the week number three, uh, you can learn about, uh, you can <laughs> learn about the deep tunneling, the system design or the mock interviews. So uh, why is actually because it's uh, to be ready for the advanced ML roles or the FANG style interview. I mean, or you can say MANG style interview, the, the Facebook, the Amazons, Netflix, and the Googles, okay? So neural networks, so it's nothing but like a mini brain with uh, the layers of logic in kinds of neural networks. And the CNN is basically used for the image classifications in case of image, like you can do the face detections, okay? The RNN, and the LSTM is basically using in the sequential data like speech or text. Then you can uh, learn about the transformer architecture as well. So uh, how many encoder it have, how many decoder it have, uh, what is the query, what is the key, what is the value, and how can you also code a transformer from a sketch. So I'll create a video about that, that how can you create a transformer, you can also go and check out, okay? And the BERT and the GPT, so BERT and the GPT, so it's the most powerful projects for the language, large language model. So you know about the chat GPT, right? And you already create a series about that. How can you create here a large language model from a sketch? So uh, you can also check out this video, okay? Then what is pre-training? What is the fine tuning? What is LoRa, QLoRa and the FPEFT, okay? So pre-training is nothing but uh, start with a model already trained on big data, just like the GPT-2 or GPT-3. Then fine tuning actually, it's nothing but uh, adjust it for your own tax. Let's say uh, some kind of tax is not available in your, uh, available in the chat GPT. So you can give your own data, if you give your own company data to do some kind of fine tuning or creating here some kind of rack. Retrieval, retrieval augmented generation, okay? You can create in here some kind of rack. Then LoRa, QLoRa and PEFT, it actually help us to uh, making some tuning faster and the cheapers. So you know to also lo learn about that. Then ML system design, you can do the A-B testing. So you already discussed about the, what is the A-B testing actually. So A-B testing is nothing but, let's say I have two websites. One is called, let's say A. Let's say I have A and the B, okay? So uh, if the website of the A, okay? If the website of the A is better than the B or not, okay? Like that. I mean, it's kind of compare, comparisons, okay? Then the recommended system, I'm already creating here so many videos of that. How can I create the movie recommended systems, or the music recommended system, even the restaurant, make me, uh, the, uh, restaurant recommended system as well. Then we have the update detections. You can using here this YOLO. Okay, you can using here the YOLO. Okay, or you can also using her TFODF TensorFlow update detection model. You can use them. Okay. Then mock interview. You can practice with your friend or uh, maybe in the online. So you can use platform like the interview.io or you can also using the lead code mock interview. Okay. This is the week number four. Okay. Now uh, bonus. You can also do one more thing. Uh, you can also do some daily TSA practice uh, throughout all four weeks. You can do that. This is the most important one because uh, when you uh, try to give your interview in the FANG or the MANG, okay, uh, in the rules of machine learning. 
So in it also uh, do some kind of practice on DSM, data structure and algorithms. So you can uh, pick a data set, a DSS sheet. It's available in the in the Google as well. So it's not a promotional video, just for simplicity or just for real things. You can follow here the Stiber DSS sheet or GFG, the Geeks for Geek, or you can also follow the list from the lead code uh, or the 150 uh, questions. So at least solve five problems a day. So total uh, 150 problems in 30 days. So you can also focus on some kind of tech, uh, some kind of topic like you can uh, 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 you can actually focus on let's say array. Okay, then you can also focus on the string. Let's say string. Then you can also focus on the hash map. Then fourth, you can also learn about the trees. Okay. The fifth one is the graph, let's say graph. And then sixth one is the DP, or you can see the dynamic programming, the most important one, okay? So it's the goal practice to learn about the DSM. And also one more thing, uh, <laughs> it's up to you to revise here the every DSA in every TDS and also revise here the ML concept in every TDS. So it's up to you that uh, you do it or not, okay? But it's, it's from my sides. Now it's your choice, okay? So that's it for today now. I hope you enjoy this full guideline as well as, as well as this video. So like and share with your friends so that they also know about that, how can you, how they can actually uh, prepare themselves, okay? So namaste and bye-bye.